What is going on, Rangers fans? I am Randy, and we are back for week number six of the GBA D League. I am, of course, your coach of the Texas Pokemon Rangers. Coming off a pretty tough loss last week to Leo Six Foot Hacks, that overrated guy. Terrible battler, but, you know, we took an L. Um, but, you know, it, it was a good match. You know, for, I think I played pretty well. Um, I actually felt pretty good for once after the battle. Um, usually when I lose, it's a little annoying, and I don't, you know, I don't, I don't like to lose, obviously, but, um, it's one of those things to where, um, I think I played the best I possibly could with the exception of maybe two turns. So, I mean, I feel good about it. I felt like it was a pretty good match. I felt like it was a pretty, pretty hype match as well. So, you know, I'm glad you guys were able to enjoy that. But ultimately that puts us at, um, at, um, at a two and three. And that's not where we want to be at right now. We only have seven weeks, including today. I'm sorry, six weeks, including, to, uh, including you know, tomorrow's battle. So we need to go at mo at worst four and two to finish the season. And if we do any worse than that, we're pretty much knocked out. And I really did not imagine I'd be at two and three right now. But, you know, and we still have arguably the harder part of our schedule coming up because we still got to play, well, today we got to play Deebs. We got to play Turbo next week. And we got Zazo after and Donza after. Three back-to-back freaking huge games and then even the elective virus are doing pretty damn well greg's kind of slipping at um once you get to the season finale but greg will always come to play you know he's always energized in his life calm so that will not be an easy task for me especially if it could come down to being a playoff deciding you know playoff clinching match so um i got a hard rough schedule coming up but you know i feel like with um if i play like i played last week if i play well tomorrow well, it'll work out so I'm not too, too worried about it, and hopefully it does work out uh, for the good. Um, but let's go over uh, Turbo's team. We're playing, um, not Turbo, we're playing um, Deebs. Deebs, coach of the Calgary Flame Wheels. He's got a pretty nasty team, man. His team is pretty threatening on paper, dude. He's got Landorus T, which is a Z-Crystal user. He's got Megazard X, Superior, Nihiligo, Typo Fini, Pouring on 2, Metagross, Sneasel, Hitman on Lee. Rotom Spook and Galissapod. And before we jump more into the video, um, for today and, and probably tomorrow's Battler, we're probably going to be using the green screen, not having a layout, um, just doing different formats because I'm, I don't have time this week. I've been working all week, so I don't have time to edit. Um, so if you're wondering why it's that way for this week, it's because of work. So um, if you guys do prefer this way of builders, let me know in the comments and I'll let you, I'll let you know how it goes. Um, but for tomorrow, I'm going to try to see if I can get the bottom screen to pop up at tomorrow's live live uh, cam, hopefully. Um, if it ends up being a live cam. And then, you know, if you guys like that format better, let me know. I'll just try to be a bit more energetic about my live comms, especially if I don't have a damn uh, layout. So that's the way it's going to work out um, just for this week, and we'll see how it plays out. So please leave your feedback. That would be much appreciated. Except Leo. Leo, get the hell out of my comments and stay out of my comments. Please. Don't. I want you to unsub too. But anyways. Deebs, um, sitting at two and three. I mean, three and two right now. So he's got a pretty, pretty shaky record. He definitely can't afford to lose this game because he definitely wants to get to, uh, four and two. Uh, four and two would be a pretty decent spot, uh, especially with uh, five weeks to go after this. Um, but you know, like I said, his team is pretty, pretty threatening. Um, Megazard X, man, at plus one, just at plus two, excuse my draft for sure. Plus two, hundred percent sweeps the draft uh, without a doubt. Um, plus one necessarily doesn't because of scar potential and other sort of things. Um, Nihiligo is super threatening against my squad. It's got the coverage to hit my entire uh, draft roster, which is pretty insane. Um, type of Finney is annoying. Call Mind Finney is something that could be a play, but Shaman definitely beats that 100% of the time. Um, you know, Galissapod is actually something that's pretty annoying to me because I, I don't have a great Mon that can come in on that, especially if it's like a banded variant. I do have Jellicent, which is 100% counter to that. Remember from last season, uh, when we played Greg week one, I had Jellicent for that thing. So that was pretty cool. And then, of course, Jellicent will be nice uh, for that thing again, uh, once uh, once again. Um, but he's got some juicy, like Superior could be a threat, man. Metagross is even annoying to Pursuit Trap Latios or just Pursuit Trapping in general to get some chip down. Uh, Sneasel, of course, has that power, a uh, nice priority at speed. Um you know, and then Porygon 2, like I said, is, is annoying. It's fat. It can just stay alive, even though I do have a fighting type mega type, you know, mega lopani. So that's going to be pretty uh, whack to deal with. Um, and overall, he's got a lot of great offense. Does it work together necessarily on paper? I'm not, you know, I'm not really too sure. Um, but it looks pretty decent on paper, hence why building was a little tricky. But I know for him, it's going to be tricky as well, given that I have my big three as well as, um, you know, Mammoth Swine to back up those big three. So. Um, 
yeah, I mean, the build was pretty shaky. Uh, we actually didn't even finish this build until a few minutes ago. And I'm going to battle uh, Deebs in just a few minutes. I'm going to switch shirts for that, just, you know, for different uh, feeling of days. But we're actually going to battle in a few minutes. Um, so I feel a little uneasy about the build because nobody was communicating in, in, the, in the builder and the server. And it was kind of annoying to me because I wanted, you know, people wanted to join my front office to help me out. But when it comes time to build, they don't show up. I mean, some of them do. I'm not going to say who don't and who does because you all know who you are. Um, but, and that's fine because everybody has shit to do, right? Um, everybody has stuff to do. Everybody's got a schedule. Everybody's got life to handle. But if you just, like, just, this is just my front office, guys. But if you just show up, if you just chat, um, input what you think is going to be good or bad, or look at the pace, submit your sets, whatever, at least or at most twice a week. For each build, that'd be fine. That's all I need to do. There's two. Maybe even one if you can p uh, put a huge paragraph or whatever. That's all we need, and that's all we'll need to do, um, and then we'll be efficient. Um, but it was especially hard this week because I had to play Leo and um, Deebs within the same week. So um, Leo pushing it back as a vacation definitely messed it up. But it's not his fault. It's my fault, too, because I couldn't battle um, as soon as I wanted to either. So it's no one's fault. But just the way it ended up working out. So um, not a big deal, but that's just kind of a shout out to my front office guys because, you know, I know I know they mean well and I know they're going to work hard to help me out, especially since they want me to see me succeed. Um, but I bet you some of them think I'm probably better than what I – they probably thought I was better than what they thought I was because I'm pretty garbage. You know, I, I suggest some pretty fire sets. So um, I'm a little annoying to deal with in Discord. But anyways, let's go ahead and jump into my team and what we got here. We got ABP, the Megalopony, running return, high jump kick, fake out, and the ice punch. Pretty standard, nothing really to explain here. Obviously, Ice Punch is for that Landorus T if he ends up being a more physically defensive set. But we always two shot Landorus T at minus one if he's max fizz def. So, um, Landorus T isn't really a reliable opening answer, especially if he is uh, max defense because I can just outrun and knock it out anyways. Um, although, Intimidate could be annoying because he can allow something like uh, maybe his. Um, Charizard X or even this type of Finny to take advantage of that boost and you know uh, force me to swap out there and maybe get up a sub go for a dragon dance whatever the case could be so that's the only annoying thing about Landorus having Intimidate could definitely uh, shut down stuff like Lopini and Mammoth, Mammoth Swine make them weaker and make them less uh, useful against some of his setup mons um, it doesn't really apply to Mammoth Swine but uh, ma mainly Lopini um, and even maybe let's say something like um, I guess Skunk yeah, I guess if that's if you want to go that route but yeah Lopini's you know, obviously, it's it's a great Pokemon. He doesn't have a great, he doesn't have one solid answer to it on his squad. He doesn't have a Mon that can come in on return, that can take a high jump kick after, or vice versa. Not, the type of Finny Max Defense is the, pretty much the only way to check Lopony. But after it comes in one time, um, after Rocks return will two shot if it's already taken a return already. So um, it's not a reliable way to beat uh, Lopony unless you got one of those fifty percent berries. Um, but even then. It would require him to make some aggressive doubles to avoid that anyway. So, um, Lopone is always just a solid Pokemon. And, of course, Adam and Nature is the play once again because his fastest squad mon on his squad is, I believe, the Sneasel. So, we can pretty much run Adam and Nature and have that nice, juicy, hard-hitting returns and um, high jump kicks. So, next up, we have Tom, the Mammoth Swine. Thank you. Shout out to Tom. We got um, a nice, kind of sort of a similar set to last week, but we're running a more Fizz Def Mammoth Swine. Adam and Nature... 180 speed i believe that's able to outrun the um outrun the let me double check what that's for the i think it's adamant max speed metagross i didn't do for jolly i don't think although i could double check that real quick i don't remember what i did um i think it was adamant metagross though i'm pretty sure it was adamant metagross because um yeah I, I put enough speed to outrun max speed adamant metagross um because there's no way he's going to be Jolly, I don't think. His bullet punch can check me anyway. Um, I put a 108 attack, and I believe that one-shots Megazard X with no bulk with Earthquake. Um, and that's all I pretty much needed from there because I don't need max attack. I can probably invest a lot more into my defense, which I'm seeing is going to be really effective with last week. So hopefully it works out this week as well. Um, but we do have the Rindle Berry, which allows me to check the Superior um, guaranteed uh, one time in case he wants to bring it in for free, thinking he can get up a sub or thinking he can get his Leaf Storm to get up a free plus two to knock me out. But uh, with the Rindle Berry, I can snack on a, I think, a plus two Leaf Storm too. And then um, 
you know, a fire back with an ice school spear. An ice school spear can actually help deal with a potential Yachi superior. So shout out to Aaron Barden for that set suggestion. Um, but otherwise, knockoff is a pretty great move here this week. Um, I thought about freeze drive, but this doesn't do it wasn't doing enough to uh, Finny. So we felt that um, knockoff was great to knock off Evie Light, knock off uh, leftovers on Finny, knock off a Rocky Helmet. It knockoff is just a great move this week. Um, so it was definitely a great option. And also with this spread, I can actually live a Flare Blitz from Zard at neutral. Um, I believe even after Rocks, I think, with all that uh, defense investment. It's also another soft sneasel check as well. So um, although it'll probably be packing low kick, I would imagine. Um, so that's really not <laughs> really a real switch in. But Mammoth Swine's great, man. Mammoth Swine's always been doing well. And hopefully this fat defensive uh, investment will help me out against Zard potentially because he might try to bring in Zard on this and set up. So, you know, with that, I can always live a Flare Blitz, and that'll be always cool for that. Um, so, yeah, Rinna Berry is pretty much there for Superior and Superior alone. Um, I guess it could be for Metagross if you want to run Grass Knot, but, I mean, why would you not ever go for Iron Head and Meteor Mash? So... You know, why would you not do that? So Celesteela is next up. We have a mixed defensive Celesteela. And this pretty much allows me to... This defensive investment prevents a banded liquidation from two-shotting Celesteela 100% of the time. Unless he gets a defense drop. But, I mean, if that's the case, um, so be it. Um, Air Slash Heavy Slam is the move of choice. Air Slash is only there for the Galissapod pretty much. I guess for Hitmonlee as well. But after doing some calcs, Heavy Slam actually does more to Hitmonlee. So... There is, there's really no reason not to click Heavy Slam against the Hitmonlee, Lee, but um, you know, Air Slash also hurts the Superior, I suppose. Um, but I'm pretty sure that Heavy Slam does more, um, in, in that case. But it's mainly there for the Galissapod because physically defensive Galissapod can be very annoying, and Pod really can't touch Celesteela unless he has like a banned liquidation. But I do, the I do expect Galissapod to come. I do expect it to be like a spike variant with like a berry or a helmet or something like that. So, um, I don't think it'll be, um. You know, banded. Uh, at least that's what I think. And of course, Leech Shooting Protect is there for me to have a pretty good chance to one v one the Finny and the Porygon. Um, pretty much always one v one the Porygon. I'm pretty sure. Um, I pretty much PP saw that thing 100 percent because in VGC this thing always beats that unless he has a download boost. Um, and download Porygon is something that I do expect because Trace isn't very helpful in this scenario unless he wants to Trace like Levitate on Latios and then be able to take it, you know, Mammoth Wine hit Earthquake, but um, trait download makes more sense because he can get a boost and be dealing more damage to my Celesteela. Um, if he invests, if he if he guesses my set correctly, he probably thinks it's going to be Fizz Def, so he can take advantage of my lack of Spadef, get a plus one boost, and then have Thunderbolt to be able to hit me and be able to maybe two-shot me depending on his investment. Um, of course, Ice Beam is very effective against Latios as well, but um, tri Attack is probably going to be his other move of choice. So I, that's what I at least expect from the Porygon, so potentially I can't what if you want it, but it's not a big deal given what I have. So, next up we have Billy the Scarf Latios. Now, this is a very important mon here because this is the only way I can check the plus one Zard reliably with Scarf Draco Meteor. You know, 90% of the time, I should say, 90% of the time, I can I can check a plus one Zard. Um, <clears throat> so, you know, that's what it's there for. Psy Shock, of course, is for the Psychic Spam in general. He doesn't even. Um, I mean, obviously, Psy Shock is the play. Um, because Psychic is a little weaker for Nihiligo. That's really the only reason why. Um, and of course, Shadow Ball is for the Metagross in case I want to, in case it's like a late game situation. Otherwise, I probably wouldn't stand on Metagross because he's going to Pursuit Trap me anyway. Um, and Trick, of course, is there to potentially trick that Porygon, potentially trick that Finny. Um, you know, so it, it's going to be useful, I, I feel like. Um, you know, Scarf Mons, I really don't have much success with, I feel like, because they're just so. I don't know, like I just don't like scarf mods in format, dude. Like this is how I am. I don't, I don't like scarfers. Like if you, if you notice, I don't bring a lot of scarf Pokemon. Uh, I just don't. And I know they're really important in draft matches because you know speed tiers and whatnot. But I just, I'm not a big fan of scarfers, so I'm not really feeling too good about this. But I need it. I need it to check that Zard. I, I just feel weird about this because of the Finny and how easy it could just come in. Um, but I need it for Zard, dude, because I have nothing else for Zard. The way I built this team, the way my team was built, so. I absolutely needed it 100%. And of course, my speed here is enough to outrun a Night Haligo, um, even at plus one, if he's a speed boost in nature. So uh, that's also another way. To, that's also another note we can check Night Haligo at plus one speed, whether it's via Scarf or a speed boosting uh, set. Next up, we have hashtag Pursuit, the Skunk Tank making um, its appearance once again. It's the only second time it's shown up, and you know, running a similar set to that AV Max near Max Defense. And this pretty much allows me to have another sort of soft check to the Zard if it's not at plus one. Um, ignore that HP Dark. It's supposed to be Hidden Power Ground. 
Um, but yeah, this is also my Night Haligo pretty much check as well. Um, it, it can wall it at plus, even at plus one special attack, if um, even at plus two, if I haven't taken prior damage yet. But, you know, at plus two, it's not going to be very helpful because all I could do is foul play and can't acid spray hit a power ground. So this can definitely break down the Night Haligo, get it in range of fake out, get it in range of ice shard um, with acid spray hit a power ground combination. I know... It's going to take its access to like Iron Tail and Dig and stuff like that. Maybe even Max Attack Adamant like Crunch can do the job with Sucker Punch. But we wanted a special Acid Spray set with Sludge Bomb. Mainly to break through a 1v1 potentially Porygon and the type of Finny. So that's the reason why we opted to run that. And then Foul Play there. Of course to punish Zard from wanting to set up on me. As well as doing some pretty decent damage to his other physical attackers such as the Galissapod. Um, so overall it's a pretty nice set. It also does... Um, you know, it's just a great Pokemon in this matchup. Um, being able to check the Superior as well. Superior is what I forgot to say. Um, so check. Obviously, I won't ask this to Superior, or else I'm just <laughs> asking myself to lose. But you know, it's a great Pokemon, and being able to check two of his biggest uh, sweepers, um, even potentially three sweepers if, if, if Zard isn't set up. But you can check Nihiligo and check Superior, which is really important in this matchup because those two are pretty big threats. And finally, we have Barbarical making it's only its second appearance of the season. The first time was in the season opener. Um, but here, Barbarical is back. Aaron B running a Stealth Rock, Stone Edge, Taunt, and Liquidation set. Now, this is a pretty cool set. Came up with Aaron Barden himself. He wants a um, pretty near max defense uh, Barbarical to check Zard X because we don't expect him to be running Thunder Punch um, because he doesn't need Thunder Punch. Um, Jellicent does not appreciate Dragon Claw already, and Jellicent really can't do much back to Zard. So, um, D Claw, Flare Blitz, Roost, and Dragon Dance, at least that's a standard set. That's what I expect to come. Um, he could probably opt to run a bulkier Zard. He could, I could even see him running like a Roost 3 attack Zard, to be honest. I don't, really, I don't think he necessarily needs to run Dragon Dance. He could be running like a fatter Adamant Zard with a lot of HP or Spadaf or whatever the case could be. Um, you don't know, man. It's just the way it could be. Um, but this is a really cool set because I can actually outrun a slightly invested Finny. Um, not slightly, but I can have an outrun Min Speed Finny. Um, and then outrun uh, the Porygon and actually potentially beat Porygon depending on its item. Depending on, you know, its its health and stuff like that. The Z Stone Edge is really, really cool because I can nuke for sure the Zard. Nuke the Barbarical. I mean, not the Barbarical. The Galissapod. Um, pretty much just get a free nuke off, uh, especially if he doesn't bring his, his rock resist. So that's really cool. Um, of course, taunt, like I said, the taunt those pouring on. So I won't recover. Stealth rock, I need my stealth rocks up um, because he's probably going to be getting up spikes and stealth rock in this game. So I need my hazards um, as best as I can here in this matchup. And then finally, liquidation is my other form of reliable stab. Liquidation is doing hitting pretty hard with tough claws. I believe it's like, like 110 power uh, with tough claws, um, which is pretty decent. It's actually stronger than the Stone Edge um, on Mon that don't resist it. So that's really cool with that. And yeah, I mean, this max defense def this near max defense of uh, Barbarical is really nice because of that nice bulk here. I can actually check Zard. Um, as a matter of fact, this is actually a pretty decent and switch into Zard because if he's not running T-Punch or Earthquake, I can live a plus one Dragon Call 100% of the time. So if Zard comes in on Steela, Zard comes in on Mammo, or not Mammo, but Zard comes in on a... Uh, you know, Latios, if I'm locking into like Psy Shock, I can always just go into my Barracle 100% of the time as long as I'm at full HP because I can live any hit. So that's really cool having that thing um, in the back. So thanks to Aaron Barden for that set. So that is the squad for this week. Um, a bit of a shaky, I have a shaky feeling about the build, um, but looking at it more, talking about it more, it's actually a pretty solid team. I feel like I think Barbarical and Skunk are going to have pretty big games here. I think Latios is probably going to fail because I'm just not good with Latios or Scarf Mons. And um, I do expect Mammoth Swine to come in clutch once again uh, with the fatter a variant, being able to maybe catch something off guard like Superior or the Zard X. So that's what I'm hoping will happen. But anyways, guys, that is the builder for this week. I hope you guys enjoyed. Let me know in the comments how you like this format better than my other other format or if you like that format over this live you know, face cam format. So I hope you all enjoyed, and I will catch you all tomorrow for game day against the Calgary Flame Wheels. See you all then.